Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Two Headed World Gaming Channel Last Epoch and this week we're gonna try to put together a build which instant kills enemies under a certain percentage of health. This one includes bosses as well, although they might be a bit more resistant to the effect, but I still wanna see how far can we push this idea? How can we make it effective in the end game? And even though it might not turn out perfectly with this focus on instant kill, I'm sure we can make a really nice build out of it in the end. And I overall, I really feel like we're going to learn a lot from the process of doing it, you know, trying to fix the different problems which might arise. And I find that to be a lot of fun and I'm hoping you're going to enjoy it as well. In order to do this mission, we're going to use a mage going into the Spellblade Mastery. We're going to use this character right here, which is the first Spellblade I ever played in last epoch, which means that I'm already about three episodes in. If you want to see where this idea came from, I will have a separate playlist with these first episodes where I only started from wanting to try the Spellblade Mastery out and see what it had to offer. I picked Melee Combat just because it seemed appropriate for the Spellblade Mastery. And because we are a squishy mage, I decided to focus on cold damage as an extra layer of defense. Because chilling enemies and slowing them down and also freezing them in place, not allowing them to attack us while we get in melee combat, sounded like a great idea, and it was. And just playing with the character and leveling it up, I saw that there was this ability where we could shatter frozen enemies. So that's where it started, this is where it is at, and from here on out, we're gonna start building it towards the end game. And we're gonna see how can we make it super efficient in completing this mission the way i'm doing episodes is that i am farming in between them i'm not recording it i'm just gathering extra passive and active skill points i'm gathering better gear and then when i start recording an episode i start spending all of those points i talk about choices that i'm making and why i'm making it and sharing this knowledge with you and you can give me feedback as well if you have better ideas of how to do things and in a way we're sharing information and trying to get better and better at the game and overall once we're done with that we run the map and we see how the power level feels we're trying to figure out what the new problems are and we try to make a plan for what we might want to do next and let's talk about the main skill which we are going to use in order to achieve our goal, and that is Shatter Strike. A sweeping melee attack that strikes enemies in a circle around us, dealing cold damage and instantly killing frozen enemies with low 100 health. Now that is a good start, but we need more power to it. And if we go down this path, we see that we could go to Obliteration, where Shatter Strike instantly kills frozen enemies that are below a health threshold, and with 4 points invested, that's 200% pretty good and we could also get winter's boon shatter strike instantly kills frozen enemies that are below a higher health threshold proportional to how many unique skills you have used in shatter strike to a maximum of four and that's 25 percent more kill threshold per unique skill use so if we're using four different skills before we start using shattering strike that means that the kill threshold is raised by a hundred percent really good in the overall picture however there are two main things which we need to keep in mind as we're putting this build together it says here that shatter strike kills frozen enemies okay so they have to be frozen the enemies have to be frozen not chilled not to with damage over time not nothing like that they have to be frozen in place so we need to make sure that we're scaling up the chances to freeze enemies in places that's uh, that applies for bosses as well because if the enemies if the enemy is frozen and they are below a certain amount of health, we're going to instant kill them. It's not a role for an instant kill. It's going to happen. We just need to make sure we're getting there. And the other thing, because we need other skills to apply in order to constantly get that kill threshold increased by another 100%, I would like, and this is what I'm going to look for, I would like to automate some of the effects that we are doing, you know, like the auras or the different uh, the different spells which we might cast, even though they might not be the most powerful, maybe we can throw something in that would freeze enemies in place, helping us a lot, and also would add up to, uh, as another unique skill, to this skill threshold right here so that's what i'm thinking at the moment this is where we're starting from i ha already have another point here in shatter strike and in order to see how many time it applies how many time 
are we actually shattering enemies in place at the moment, we can go here with Frigid Zephyr. Chatter Strike grants haste for 2 seconds when instantly killing low health enemies. So this is a really good way to measure if this effect happens often enough or not. It is going to be the, our way of figuring out if we are on the right path or not. So I am going to invest these points right here. The other effects that I have on Shatter Strike is Rhyme Strike here where Shatter Strike chills enemies by increased, uh, the chance is increased by 100%. felt like this was pretty good to slow enemies down when we are doing our melee attacks. Icy Flow, I'm getting a bit of ward when using this melee attack, plus a bit of mana efficiency overall, getting the ward means better protection for us. I also went here with Frostbitten, where Shadow Strike has a chance to inflict enemies with Frostbite. Frostbite deals damage over time and increases the chance to be frozen by 20%, so that's why I wanted this. There's also Razor Eyes, which we might want to go for next because it penetrates cold resistance, which also helps us a lot with uh, defeating bosses especially, you know, those really strong or resistant to, to freeze damage. And we might change this. Shatter Strike hits convert all stacks of Ignite on enemies into Frostbite. I don't know if we're going to go with this. It means that we might have to throw in an effect where we are actually igniting enemies and then whenever we're using Shatter Strike, we're turning those into Frostbite, increasing the chance to freeze enemies in place. So there is a nice combo there. However, we will have to scale up the Ignite chance. On the other side, I have here Solidify, and we're going to push a lot in this direction where Shatter Strike has a higher chance to freeze enemies in place. We are at 100% with two points out of five, so we can get 250% there. I also have this Frozen Shrapnel as a bit of extra damage where Shatter Strike fires icy spikes from the edges of its area of effect. It's hitting enemies in the back line, so that's pretty good. We can get some extra damage for the spikes and speed, but not something that I want necessarily. However, I would like to go in this direction where Unrelenting Winter is leaving frozen ground. So Shatter Strike leaves a patch of frozen ground for 5 seconds, which chills all enemies who walk on it. And that decreases their attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. Overall, it's a really nice effect for a defensive character. This is all that I'm doing here with Shatter Strike. Over here with Mana Strike. Mana Strike is our basic melee attack. All of these effects, all of these other spells consume a lot of mana. So this one right here costs 14 mana. This one right here costs 17. I have 92 mana at the moment, so not a whole lot. But we're using mana strikes alternatively just to generate a lot of... Yeah, I, I've said mana a lot. Look at this. Mana strike grants you 80% more mana. You will see when I am running out of mana and I'm doing these melee attacks with mana strike, I'm actually gaining all the mana back in about 3-4 hits. And that's really good, really effective. I am thinking of throwing in even more effects like right here. I'm going to get some extra ward with mana strike. When you attack with mana strike and hit at least one enemy, you gain ward plus 3. This is going to be very good for us. It's going to help us be a bit more defensive. And I have two more points. I was thinking of going with another plus one, plus three here to mana gain. But since it's working quite well at the moment, I would like to hit more enemies. And thus we're going to go with slightly higher area of effect. And I like that a lot. It's going to be a 60%. I don't know if we need more than that, but we're going to leave it as it is. Elemental Nova. Elemental Nova is a very interesting attack here. Cast a Nova around us that deals fire, cold, and lightning damage. All types of Elemental Nova that you have enabled have an equal chance to be cast. So I have here increased area of effect and damage. I went with Ice Nova, so it enables Ice Nova instead of this multiple elemental or these multiple elements because it has a base freeze rate of 40, right? And then I went in this direction where... Elemental Nova cast Freezing Cascade on hit, creating a cascade of Freezing Novas that chain between enemies, meaning that when I cast it, and there are many enemies in a chain one near the other, it spreads to them, and that's really nice, it's doing a lot of damage, and of course it's giving us a chance to freeze them in place in the end, because I went up here with Glyphs of Winter, Elemental Nova has a chance to chill enemies and increase chance to freeze enemies, yes, that's exactly what we want there, and that is about it for this at the moment, we're going to return back to it in a second, but for the moment, that's all that you need to know. 
As far as another point, I guess at this moment we're just gonna go further with Glyphs of in Winter, and that's gonna be about it. Finally, I have now a new specialization slot, and there are a few ideas of what we might want to do as far as specializing a skill in. So we want more skills that can be that are casted automatically or that adds up to the effect of the freezes and the freezing attacks. Enchant weapons sounds like a really good idea. Enchanted weapons, when we activate it, we get 50% more elemental damage for 5 seconds with our melee attack. So that is great. That is a lot of damage. As a passive, so just having it on our bar, we get 15% more elemental damage. That's really good. Now we can go, of course, in the direction where we are going to be freezing enemies in place. And we're going to talk a lot about it as we're heading in that direction. But more important here, we can get cleanse ailments where activating enchant weapon negates ailments like poison on the bleeds and things like that. It costs 15% more mana, which is a bit unfortunate, you know. But it doesn't matter too much. 30 mana cost every once in a while is not that important. The more important thing is that we get unstable enchantment. You cast Elemental Nova when you activate Enchant Weapon. You pay Elemental Nova's mana cost in addition to Enchant Weapon. So this is, in a way, automating our Elemental Nova. And even if we're not going to be staying with it as a specialization, it's still going to cast, it's still going to count as a unique skill, and thus it's going to add another 25% extra kill threshold, right, from this skill right here. So that's good. This is why I'm thinking that Enchant Weapon might be the first thing that we're going to go for, just for the extra power that this gives us. The other thing which I would like, and I think I might do, is Frost Claw. Three projectiles are to the target location to create a burst of frost. Add the spell damage applies to the burst at 100% effectiveness and it has a freeze rate of 40. So once again, we get the extra freeze rate here, but this is a spell, so it's not going to scale up properly with a melee attack. But what I like about this is that we can go down here and when you use a melee attack and hit at least one enemy, you have a chance to cast Frost Claw at it or at another nearby enemy if the hit killed the original target. That's 10% per point, we can get it to 30% to cast this one automatically, and it is a frost skill, so we can get a lot of modifiers for freezing damage, and I like that a lot. This is what I'm thinking at the moment that I might be doing. Now, there are a few other skills here which we will look at later on, but other than that, I am not really thinking of going in anything, any other direction like Glacier here because it's a bit wild and uncontrollable and eh, not exactly my cup of tea. And we could also go here with Snap Freeze, but once again, not exactly what I'm, what I feel would be super efficient. So we're going to start with the Enchant Weapons just because I like the skill and I feel it's giving us a lot of damage. We're going to go with... I could... You know what? We're gonna go in this direction, definitely with a bit of freezing, and we're gonna try to get the automatic cast of Frost Nova, just because it can happen quite quickly, and it's great for clearing maps. But we could also get melee ignite chance here increased by 5%, right? And in the end, if we're gonna go with this, where Shadow Strike hits convert all stacks of ignite on enemies into Frostbite, that means that we can combine this with this and get a lot of frostbite out of it. So something to think about for the future. But for now we're going to go with increase melee chill chance here. Whenever we, we are attacking enemies in melee. Icicle chances. Okay, we can get some extra icicles. Some extra cold damage. Activating a chant weapon causes your next melee elemental attack to be free. So activating this and then going for Shatter Strike is free. Could be cool. Let's get the Nova, as I said earlier, first. And with the other point, we're gonna go with this... We're gonna go with this Frost Brand here. Extra melee damage and increased cold damage. Great. Finally, as far as passives go, what are we going to do? Well, Freezing Aura here, this is an aura which has an automatic chance to be cast. Let's see, Fire Aura chance per second, 10%. So this casts an automatic aura, damages enemies around us. Pretty easy right there. 
And we could go with Freezing Aura, and I already invested one point in it, where we have a higher freeze rate multiplier and Fire Aura is converted to Cold. This converts its base damage and it gives a chance to freeze enemies with the, its area of effect. For one point here, we are at 25% freeze rate multiplier, so that is going to be really good for us if we keep investing there. There's also this one, Frozen Steel, your melee attacks deal additional cold damage and have a higher chance to freeze enemies, 20%. That happens, but only when we're using melee attacks. And I feel like for the moment, investing a bit more into this Frozen Steel sounds really good. What other effects have we unlocked? We don't care about lightning at all. Essence Duel, you have increased melee attack speed and gain ward when you use an elemental melee attack and hit at least one enemy. That's free ward per point. I would like to get some of that early on. Then it's more lightning, which we don't care for. Increased armor burn, arcane shield. Mm, we're getting some arcane shield here on melee hit. We could get a bit more power, but I don't think I really want it at the moment. Getting a bit more ward retention would be good. And increase elemental burst damage by 20% when we get ward and echo. Okay, so this is a... There's an 8% chance that we get elemental burst. And there's 20% more damage when that happens. I'm going to invest one point there as well. You know, not the focus for the moment. We care about freezing a bit more than anything else. So we pretty much maximized frozen steel and threw another point in freezing aura. If we were to go for the mage side, there's nothing that we care for here, except for this freeze rate multiplier. But I don't think there's a whole lot in this first panel that we, we really want. As far as gear goes, I don't have like the super gear, even though I farmed a lot uh, during the first run to the end game. I have this rainbow edge for a bit of extra cold damage, some extra chance to chill on hit and a bit of critical strike multiplier. I have this heart where we get 50% freeze rate multiplier, plus one to snap freeze, which we don't have, 44% increased freeze duration with snap freeze and 13% increased cold spell cast speed. Hopefully we're gonna get a bit more from this set and try to put it together, but we shall see when that happens. It's definitely not gonna happen now. And I also have these node rifts where we get 28% increased chance to apply frostbite on hit, some cold penetration, some dodge rating, a bit more damage with spells and attacks with cold damage, and that's about it, which applies to us. As far as an idol goes, I have just found this one, where 20, we get 29% chance to apply frostbite with cold skills, and we get plus 3 to melee cold damage. It's not the best in the world, but it still helps us a lot. So we're gonna use, we're gonna do that, and I feel like that is about it for the moment. There we go. This is how the build looks right now. This is the setup for what we're about to do, and we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see how effective this is in combat. This is the Shantra Strike. We can use this. So what we're looking for, like right there, you've just seen us instant kill the enemy. You can take a look at the bottom left of the screen and whenever you see that haste figuring, you will know that we've instant killed certain enemies. It's already working pretty well. Because at the end of the day, it's not about only about the percentage, it's also about a certain amount of health numerically. So that's what helps us a lot in these situations. And whenever I'm running out of mana, you can see that I am doing mana strike. Which recovers the mana in about 3 hits. Normal enemies, we're doing really well. What we need to figure out at this point is how to freeze our bosses. I am applying, as you can see there, I am applying, what is this? I am applying Frostbite, but I am not really applying shields. Or is that a maximum of three? I wonder if we can do even more later on. 
we go. You can see that I have a lot of power. Even against this boss, I am doing really well. If you want to see the character stats, where they are. There's nothing special there. I don't have any stats which are great. I would like to focus a bit more on intelligence because it's giving us some more retention. And that is our main defensive layer. As far as resistances go, I threw in a few modifiers here for poison just because we're in the area with a lot of scorpions. But the rest are low enough to where we will need to figure out a way to, to fix it in the near future. A bit more war generation wouldn't be bad either, especially in, in this combat. We can see that we're running out of health quite often. So let's see, we've gained another point in enchantable weapons. And I guess I'm going to go for the extra damage here and then we're gonna go for the free elemental attack. I might even go into icicles. Because we can do that extra damage. I am thinking if we throw some of these icicles away, it means that we are hitting enemies in the back line, reducing their health, and thus increasing the chance that when they get close to us, if we have a really high rate of freezing, then they're gonna when they get frozen, we're gonna have that level, or they'll be weak enough to where we can instant kill them a lot more often. That's what I'm thinking. We could go here with Kindling Blade, the chant weapon activates automatically once its cooldown expires. So we can automate this effect as well, to where we don't need to press it anymore. And we can reduce its mana cost, we can give it extra elemental damage. <laughs> Desperation, you deal increased elemental damage with melee attacks proportional to how much mana you are missing when enchant weapon is activated. Don't mind if I do. Sounds pretty good to me. And we can get some extra attack speed while this is activated. Oh, there's there's so much we can do here. Really looking forward to putting it to good use. Now let's see, with this passive skill point, Mana Reaver would give us extra health, chance to gain mana 6% per point when we are hitting at least one enemy in melee. And we also gain another 10 mana. Sounds good. Dual wielding, to be honest, I don't like dual wielding in this situation. I don't feel like that is going to help us a lot. I feel it's going to make us squishier and it's not exactly the direction in which I'm going to go into. So let's get this mana reaver here. Just for that extra mana regeneration. And then I'm going to go even further with freezing aura. At the end of the day, freezing enemies in place, very important for right now. In a second, I'm also going to show you the base, the basic loot filter which I've made, far from being final. But I just thought of a few effects that I might be interested in and I tried to filter some stuff out. I think I found a helmet which might help us. Let's see. 41% chance to apply frostbite on hit with cold skills, 35 rating on dodge and 90 armor plus another 63. Overall, I'm losing some ward per second and a bit of lightning resistance. 
I could craft some stuff on it, but I don't know if I really want to waste stuff at the moment. Yeah. Either way, I think that is a good helmet for now. Let's see how we will deal against one of these elemental mages. Let's see if at the end of it, this is what I'm mostly curious about, if at the end of this battle, whether we get that boost to haste, whether we manage to instant kill him. I don't know if that will be the case, because freezing enemies like this is slightly tougher. As you can see, I'm alternating between Shatter Strike and getting the mana strike where I'm getting back the mana. Fortunately for us it happens very quickly. It's built in such a way that this happens very quickly. It did not happen. We did not gain the gain the haste there, so it didn't happen. We didn't freeze the enemy enough to instant kill them. Unfortunately, for now. But we shall see whether we manage to succeed fixing this problem in the future. We have another boss here. The amount of war generation that we have right now and with the amount of protection that I'm running with, we are good on defenses. I am also running a shield and as you can see the block effectiveness there is 37%. So that is good with a block chance of 23%. I have decent armor, 21%. There's a bit of dodge as well but I haven't focused on it. And it's mostly about ward and ward retention. Another boss bites the dust very easily. As we're going towards the next section, here is the loot filter. So I have showing us show all unique set and exalted items. I have hide normal and magic items because I don't feel like there's anything that I want from those items. I have here hide all primarily stack light rogue and sentinel specific items. For armor, let me go here and clear this out and then we'll talk about armor. I guess I have to sit still. As far as armor goes... I have picked resistances and armors removed all resistances while channeling so this is a pretty much a basic armor but the other one which i picked is for the loot filter to show us effects which are specific to the build that we want right cold penetration with frostbite chance to apply frostbite chance to cast fire aura on critical strike and increase the damage and other things like that the fire aura if you don't remember the fire aura is this right here where each second, if you are moving or using a melee attack, you have a chance to cast Fire Aura. So I thought, why not scale that up as well with an item if we manage to, to get there, right? If you manage to find something good for it. Then I have levels of Shattering Strike to begin with. I am not looking necessarily for other items at the moment. And I put the same sort of modifiers on Mage Idols here. For example, chance to gain ward on melee hate sounded pretty good. Extra melee elemental damage also sounds very good. Everything that has to do with some of these skills. I haven't found one with a kill threshold at the moment, so I'm not sure. I'm guessing there is none which will increase this any further. But we shall see whether we need it or not. Mostly what I'm thinking is that we need to freeze enemies in place and if we manage to do that, if we manage to push enough numbers 
on freezing enemies down, then maybe at that point we can say that it's going to be... The instant kill is going to happen either way, right? Because it's a certain percentage or either a certain threshold as far as, you know, 100 health as the base skill says here. Or it has those extra multipliers for percentage with, depending on how many unique skills we have used before doing it and things like that. But either way, you can see here that it happens very often. So I am happy with that. Somehow, some way, somewhere, it seems effective. If this will not work in the end game, I would be su surprised because then it would be a dead part of the skill tree for Shatter Strike. There wouldn't be any point in actually throwing points in it if it's not going to be effective in the end game. Maybe it's not going to be super effective on bosses just because of how strong they are on breathing effects. And I'm guessing that there might be a lower threshold for bosses when it comes to... Uh, excuse me for a second here while I concentrate on this. Seems like I'm in a bit of trouble. I might want to get a bit more war generation, but... Get out of the way. Oh, no, we're good. Okay, there it is. So not, not a huge damage level, but it seems like it's working pretty well. It seems like we're freezing enemies decently often. I can only imagine how she feels. That, that is about it for today. If you have any thoughts on how to put this together, like if, you, if you've tried some ideas out and uh, there are certain obstacles that you've encountered, let me know down in the comments below. I would be very curious to, to hear from you and just try to see if I could work around those challenges, maybe find a solution. But for now, I am going to start farming. I am going to start getting some extra levels. And I'm thinking that maybe the next level at which I'll return will be... Hopefully? We might not have to return until level 50. At which point we will have so many points passive and active to spend. And we're gonna try to see whether getting that claw... Frost claw effect is going to help us in, in pushing this idea one level higher and yeah that's about it I, i'm out of words at this point i think i've explained everything that i wanted to and from here on out is just an unknown element which i am curious about and you'll have to see it when i get there until tomorrow until the next episode hope you have enjoyed it thank you very much for watching thank you very much for the support if you do like what you see here, do consider leaving a like as it does help me, help the channel grow, you know how YouTube works. And I wish you all, till tomorrow, have a wonderful day.